All right. We'll just jump right in today. Uh, and <clears throat> let's start with a quick recap of where we were last time. So what's the last thing we talked about? Side, side, side. Side, side, side. So you just said one of the three uh, congruency theorems that we had for triangles. Right. So we had our side angle side postulate. Then we had our theorem that was side angle side. Then we had our theorem that was angle side angle. And then finally we had our theorem that was side, side, side. So we start out the section talking about congruency of angles, and we kind of evolved to talking now about congruency of entire triangles. So I think our next one, our next theorem, let me make sure we don't accidentally skip one. I know we almost skipped the isosceles triangle one last time. So theorem 6, 7, that was side, 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 so don't go past. Oh, he has a little side proof here before, not a theorem, but just a side proof. So next word, uh, we've already had some conversation about right angles. Will you remember what a right angle is? Yeah. What's a right angle? It's exactly 20 degrees. No, we don't know that. We haven't even used the word degree this whole time. It's half. It's something that bisects. <laughs> uh, we haven't used bisect yet. Yeah, you got the right idea. So you know what the picture looks like. We did bisect. What I want, we did talk about bisecting. That's true. But we did not define a right angle as the angle that you get if you bisect. Okay. By, by bisect, I mean each angle is congruent. When you divide an eight, 180, a straight eight. angle in half, and you get two congruent angles. And okay. those, that angle. You're saying a lot of words. A right angle is an angle that is congruent to its supplement. Thank you. All right. And, uh, all right. That's it. Now, we've given a definition of a right angle. We have yet to prove that right angles actually exist in our geometry. So that's what our next proof is going to be. Is we're going to do a proof that right angles actually exist. Right angles exist. So we gotta think about our existence proofs. So what do we know for sure exists in the plane? Three points. Three points. We know that we can for sure get three points. So I know that I can for sure start out by taking some line, we'll call it line L, that's using two of my points, right? Right. And then you have one that's off. And some point not on it. Right. Which I'll arbitrarily label one of the points on here. I'm going to call that point O. Our line for sure has at least one point on it. Right? No, it has two. Okay. It for sure has at least one, though. Okay. So label one of the points on it point O, and we know that there's a point not on the line, call it point A. Right. <laughs> right? And now, this makes an angle. This here makes an angle for us. I know from our existence postulate about angles that there must be an angle down here congruent to the angle up there. Not sure how right that looks. Got a little bit more clear. So I know that there must exist this ray down here such that this ray is the same angle as that ray. In other words, this angle has to be congruent to this angle. Right. Right? And it goes on however far it goes on. Now, I know by my existence postulate for congruent segments that if I have a segment and I've got some other line, I can find another congruent segment. So I know that there must exist a point over here called A prime, such that this is congruent to this. Right. And now notice this triangle that we make here. The remainder of my proof is going to be to prove that this is in fact a right, right angle. Anyways, I know that A is on one side of the line and that A prime is on the other side of the line, so there has to exist some point between them that's actually on the line, so I'm guaranteed that I have a point C, right? Right. 
So now why did it is proof that there was a point C in the first place. Like, why did you say all I now? You know, there's two points and there's a million thousand. I points. wanted to find the point C between A and A prime. The same. Why can't you just go say there is a point that connects A and C? So there is a point C on a line somewhere because the line has an infinite amount of points in this much area, right? Why did you say the segment AC will have an angle complementary? it to itself now. I'm missing what you're saying. But it sounds like a piece of some of the logic you were trying to use is if I've got this finite space and I know I have an infinite number of points in there, then I must eventually use this exact point. And there's a point such that the angle is... But that's not true, if there's, even if there is an infinite number of points. Well. Why not? Imagine that I list it out. Imagine that this is zero on the real number line. That this is one on the real number line. And what I do is I plot out all the rational numbers. Well, here's square root of two. I never get that point if I plot all the rationals. There's an infinite number of rationals there. There's still a line going straight up there. It would be a, it would be a right angle. Well, whether there is or there isn't, I'm saying the fact that there's an infinite number of points in a finite space doesn't guarantee you that it's dense, that you have all your points filled in. That's the only thing I was, only point I was making there, because it's a subtle point that comes up more than you'd expect in more advanced math classes. But I needed this point to be exactly between A and A prime. Okay. So I had to choose the point. So I had to set up A and A prime sure. to find the point between them. Okay, so now what do you notice about that image? Notice that we're going to be talking a lot about triangles now. Triangles, triangles, triangles. What do you see? What kind of tri what? I see two uh, right triangles. Okay, so we're proving that those. Triangle. You see an isosceles triangle. What do you know about isosceles triangles? Those two angles are congruent. The base angles are congruent. So now, since triangle AOA prime is an isosceles triangle, I know its base angles are congruent. So I know that that is congruent to that. Okay. Now you know by angle side angle that. Well, we don't really have that, so notice you had that information, but didn't really add anything. Oh, I see what you're saying, angle, side, angle. Okay, you saw it differently. Good, that works, that works. So we have angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle. So what do we know about these two triangles? They're congruent. They're congruent. I now know that this side length is the same as this side length. I now know that this is the same as that, and more importantly, I know, let's mark in green, those are the same. I know that this angle is congruent to this angle. Now, A, A prime is a line segment. So these two angles together make a straight angle. Straight angle. And they're congruent to each other. So this angle is congruent to the supplement. This angle is congruent to the supplement. It means it's right angle. means it's right angle. So that's our picture. Now let's write it out in words. So, uh, one, let O be a point on L, comma, and let A be a point not on L. And we won't bother specifying how we're guaranteed these things exist. I kind of explained it as we were saying at the picture, but completely relying on existence postulates here. Okay, so number two. Uh, I'm probably have to set this up so that that's called R1 or something like that. So what's the next way that we want to say this? So I've got my A up here, I've got my O here, I need to get my A prime down here. So first I need to get my angle. Well, since there's, since the, the any two points has a line between them, there's a line between A and O. We're missing Alvin. Okay, so let R1 be the ray on the opposite side, opposite side, Martin's really learning. Oh, my jump over here. Let's see if I can find that. 
dark one. Of my L. Of L. On the opposite side of, uh, of L. As A. From A. Yeah. Such that. Did you say from or as? You can say either, right? The opposite side from A, the opposite side is A. I'm fine with either of those uh, phrasings. Such that angle AOC Oh shoot. We really need to label this thing to talk about it, don't we? So maybe here's the line L. We're probably gonna my marker's just garbage. So we'll call this R1, we'll call this line L, and we'll end up calling this R2. I think that'll work. So Consider the angle composed of the ray through A through OA. Oh, I didn't label R1 yet. Oh, goodness. Setting up the picture, setting up the picture. All right, let R1 be one of the rays from O. So it doesn't matter if we pick R1 that way or R1 that way. Or is it going to matter? Let's see, if I pick this over here, then we still end up constructing triangles the same way. Let me let me just draw over here and see what that would look like. So if we would have had A up here, and if we would have done the angle down here, got our A prime down here, and drawn that down, it'd still be it's still work fine. Then we would have been talking about this angle rather than this angle. Why? Because I'm doing the angle R1 A. Oh. That's the issue. We don't have enough to drop a perpendicular down. One of those proofs where I draw the picture is a lot easier than write down the proof. Yeah. So. Restart this and just talk very carefully as we develop our picture. And let A be a point not on L1. Not on L or L1? Yeah, they not on L, L, thank you. So we have L and we have A. And we have O, and we don't know how O is, but so far, just draw like that. Just pick another point line here and call it B so we can start talking about an angle. Let A be a point on L. Let O comma B be points on L and let A be a point not on L. So we have two points on there. So that for sure gives me an angle, maybe a big angle where we're not in the triangle, but gives me at least a way to easily reference this. Okay. So then. Let R1, so now I'm going to come and draw R1, and we'll go from there. Let R1 be the ray on the opposite side of L from A, such that Angle A O B 
let R1 be array on the opposite side of L from A with some, I need a point to talk about, with some point, what are we on? C. So C is some point on the array. I don't know how far down. We'll find A prime after the fact. With some point C such that, there we go, now I can talk about angles, such that angle AOB is congruent to angle COB. So they're both sharing that common side. And I'm guaranteed from our existence possible for angles that such an angle exists. Okay, three. Let A prime on R1 such that, uh, such that OA is congruent to OA prime. So I know there's some point in here. We really drew that ray at the wrong angle. Just try to draw it a little bit better. So my C might have been somewhere like right there. And my A prime should be somewhere like right here. So now we can talk about this triangle. So let A prime on R1 such that OA is congruent to OA prime, comma. And observe that there exists, we already used C, so now I guess we're going to call this point D. There exists D on L such that A, D, A prime. How do I know that there's a point on L between A and A prime? Because it intersects. <clears throat> because A prime is a point on R1, and I chose R1 to be on the opposite side of A. So all the points on that ray are on the opposite side of that's A. Good. So that's how I'm guaranteed the existence of D. Okay. So now I know that this angle is congruent to this angle. I know that this side is congruent to this side. And I know that this side is congruent to itself. So by angle, side, angle. This know. time I'm using side, angle, side. You took the time to say, look, this angle is congruent to that angle, which was fine, but we didn't really need that. So I'm just going to use side, angle, side. Okay. No problem with the way you, you were thinking about it. So. Okay. So observe that order here matters very much. Which triangle I'm saying is congruent to what? I'm saying triangle A. O D is congruent to A prime triangle A O D A prime O D. O -D. Notice that, that I'm listing it out so that we have the side, right. the angle, and then the side. My so two sides are A O and O D, and my angle is O. So we side, 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 angle, side. You have to do that. Yeah, it helps keep it very clear, okay. so like your I reader can quickly find so. out what you're talking about. Yeah, I don't think I did that with someone. So observe that that is congruent to that by side, side angle, side. Five. Except, okay, so here's where we have to be careful. Because let's try out our bad picture. Because what if we look like this? We could have had O here, we could have had B here, but our A could have been over here. We would have had our A prime down here. So maybe put O like that. And our picture could have looked like this. There exists a point between A and A prime, call it D. This, we still drop that down. Oops, this D. We might as well backwards D means there exists. Yes, there exists. I know that this is congruent to this. Okay, so I'm not guaranteed that angle AOB is inside the triangle. So,
In either case, angle AOD is congruent to angle A prime OD. If our picture looks like this, how do I know that this angle is congruent to this angle? Because Because they're supplements of congruent angles. The supplements of congruent angles are congruent. Right. So either the angle that we're talking about is inside the triangle, in which case it's congruent, or its supplement is inside the triangle, in which case it's congruent. So in either case, we're guaranteed by side angle side, here's our two possible pictures, that the triangles are congruent. Right. Okay. So then, then angle ADO, ADO is congruent to angle A prime DO, comma, and they are supplements. So, they are right angles. Right? Right, I get this. And we're still missing one technicality. We're assuming that this creates a triangle. Why wouldn't it? Why wouldn't it? So, let's see the one case that we're still missing. Our picture could have looked like this. Here's L, here's B, here's O. We could have had our A's right here. Here's A, here's A prime, and then D, it happens, is O. This is a possible picture, right? Do I have all my points labeled? Yes. So, yeah, so C would have been somewhere like right, right here. Still works though, doesn't it? So uh, that is congruent to that. No, so don't try to. We can't use angle side or side angle side. Right. So we just need to say this would be the case. Six. O is not equal to D. If if O is equal to D, comma, then by construction. I made this angle congruent to this angle. So I set it up, let R1 be the ray, blah, 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 such that angle AOB is congruent to angle COB. So angle AOB is congruent to angle COB. Right. So if O and D are the same point, then Angle AOB and angle COB, COB All right. are supplements. supplements. Are supplements. And you're exactly. And congruent. Thus, they right. Sure. Thus, they are right angles. Okay, we have a mouthful of a proof. With three potential pictures all coming up together. So that was the next one. Okay, now it wasn't a theorem or anything, that was just the author proving, hey, these things exist. Now before our next proof, uh, we have a definition. Uh, you remember what it meant for one segment to be longer than another segment? Let's go all the way yeah, back. It means that that the segment is shorter than it can fit inside of it. If I had, we have to be very careful about what exactly it gave us. If I have AB and I have AC, CD, A prime, B prime, I can't remember what we used. Something like that, right? Right. And I want to say that this is longer than this. You have to say that there exists a point such that A prime equals A and 
it is where B is between A and B. B prime is between A and B. You have the right idea, wrong verbiage. A is never equal to A prime. We never require that. But you just mean pick some Same point over point. here, double prime, B double prime, such that this is congruent to this. Right. And so then B prime will be between A, B. A prime and B double prime. Which is congruent to A. So A. if we had A, B greater than A prime, B prime, that gave us that we had A, B congruent to A prime, B double, double prime, prime, and a prime, B prime, B double prime, where B prime was between A prime. Right. That was saying it was greater than. Saying it was less than, what was that? If I was going to say that AB was less than A prime, B prime. We had proof that there's such a point where we have AB is congruent to A prime, B prime, or A prime, B double prime, such that. A prime, B double prime, B double prime, B prime. So that's exactly what it meant for it to be greater than or less than. This picture tells me that A, B is greater than A prime, B prime. It does not tell me that A prime, B prime is less than A, B. That's a completely different picture. The picture for that would be if our B double prime were right here. Now we can talk about this being less than that thing. Okay, so now we're going to get into angle definitions for a greater than or a less than on an angle. <laughs> you have the proof in your book. And you also have it recorded. All right. So we want to talk about what it means for angle A. We'll first do angle A is less than angle B. Uh... I'm going to write these so I don't accidentally, let's see, if I do my angle signs really steep like that and my less than's keep them up in the air, then that should be pretty easy to read. Anyway, less than angle B. What does that mean? It means if we have our angle A here, so here we have angle A, and we have over here some angle B. Maybe keep the A out here. So I have some angle A over here, I have some angle B. It means that if I construct an angle congruent to angle A, sharing one of the sides with the other side on the same side of the line through the shared side as the angle's other side. So in other words, construct array R1 here or maybe we'll just call it R prime, to give us an uh, angle A prime. It means that this R that we construct is in the interior of the given angle. So rather than between, it's going to be interior. How do I know that A is less than B? Because we fit the interior of oh. So kind of looking at one similar to this, it's when we construct the congruent angle, the resulting ray is in the interior of the angle. So how do I know angle A is less than angle B? By definition, what is that? It means that if I were to construct this ray over here, right. then it would lie in the interior of the angle. Right. What does it mean to say that angle A is greater than angle B? It means that if I were to construct the ray, it would be on the outside. It would be in the exterior. Remember that we need to use words that we have defined. Right. So that would mean that the R over here is in the exterior of the angle. So if it lies on the angle, they're congruent. If it lies on the interior, then they're less than. And if it lies on the exterior, then it's greater than. Now, remember, just because I know angle A is greater than angle B does not mean I know angle B is less than angle A. Yeah, they're classically equivalent. It turns out they're logically equivalent. So we have to prove that. We're not just guaranteed that. Let's prove it. So that's what we're going to prove next. The author suggests skipping the proof because it's kind of hard. I think that's done. So we're going to grapple with the proof. So is that the definition? 
So we just went over the definition. What it means for one angle to be less than another. It means that when you construct it's congruent, the other side ends up in the interior. Okay, so here's what we're going to prove. So this is theorem six, eight now. We're going to prove that if angle, oh, whatever I did here. If angle B is less than angle A, then angle A is greater than angle B. That's what we're trying to prove. Now, let's set up our picture over here to the side to help us think about it. I don't really need this one. So draw our picture to the side. So first off, we're going to start out with letting this happen. Let angle B be less than angle A. So what does that give us right off the door? We know that. So we if you put angle A. Kind of smaller. You know that angle B would be in the interior of angle A. So we've got these two. A, B. Uh, I'll use blue to mark off the sides of A and green to mark off the sides of B. <coughs> So then I know that there exists some angle in here. Try and keep it uh, roughly the same size. There exists an angle in here, we'll call it angle B prime. So that this is congruent to this, and I know that B prime is in the interior of this angle. That kind of steep. Trying to keep a somewhat accurate picture here to help us see things. <coughs> Okay, so there's our angle B prime, or maybe it'd be easier to label our right, I don't know. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're going to come and we're going to construct an angle up here, A prime, congruent to A. Right. The whole crux of this proof, so now I'm gonna come up here, not great, but oh well. They construct this angle A prime. We'll use B for the green. The green is angle B. I may construct an angle A prime such that A prime is congruent to A. My whole job is to show that this line is in the exterior of this angle. Right. I know that this is in the interior of this. I need to show that this is in the exterior of that. I think that's the way I did it. Uh, angle A and angle B exist such that angle B is less than angle A. Uh, angle B prime B congruent, share a side. picture for this proof, and then we'll go out writing out all the words. Okay, so back to our initial angle, A. We're going to mark off a point, doesn't matter where, D on one side, and C on another side. Two completely arbitrary points, somewhere on those rays. Okay. And we're going to be using those to construct a triangle. Now we're going to come up to this triangle. Let me draw the line just a little better. We're going to come up and we're going to mark corresponding sides up here, C prime and D prime. So we're going to mark up here C prime, and we're going to mark up here D prime, and we're going to mark it such that this side is congruent to this side, and this side is congruent to this side. With me so far? 
Yeah. And now when we look at these triangles, what are these two triangles? Congruent. These two triangles are congruent by? Side angle side. Side angle side. Perfect. Now, over here, mark this point. I'm calling this point, point E, on that triangle. And now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to mark E prime. Let's say it's C, C, E, and C, E. C prime, E prime. I'm going to mark E prime such that this is congruent to this. I need to show that it has to be on that angle B. Right, and then I need E prime to lie on this angle. How do I argue that E prime lies on that angle? That B prime is congruent. We're about to make another triangle here. That triangle, uh, E prime, <coughs> C prime, A, is congruent to triangle B e prime. Say that again. E prime, C, C prime, prime, A, A prime is congruent to what? E, C, A. E, C, A. How do I know that? This is side angle side. We didn't mark the information before, but we do know that this angle is congruent to this angle. Because right. we proved the big blue triangle is congruent to the big blue triangle. Right. So we're guaranteed that this is congruent to this. So the angle marked off in red has to be angle B. Right. So E prime does in fact lie on this angle. So it does turn out that E prime is right here. Now if E prime is in fact on that angle, last thing we know is that this segment is congruent to this segment. Right. And this segment is congruent to this segment. So that means BE is congruent to B prime. We know that, but what we also know is that uh, EC, this segment is less than this segment. Right. Because it has this point E prime here. Oh, that's saying that. This is less, I know that this is less, how can I say this? This is congruent to this, this is less than this, so this is less than this. There we go, that's what I want to say. Right. The whole point of saying that this is less than this is E prime must be between C prime and D prime. Right. This, right. That's everything we were trying to do. We were trying to find a point on this angle between C prime and D prime. Because now I'm guaranteed that D prime is in the exterior of the angle. Right, that's it. Because it's on the opposite side of this side from C prime. So that was all a bunch of work to get that E prime point. Say that that E prime is a point on the angle between them. And so D prime has to be in the exterior of the angle. Which means they're lost. Which means what? Which means they're lost. That's what we're trying to prove. Which means that we can then say that then uh, A is greater than angle B. Because its other ray fell on the exterior. So that's the picture. Let's clean it up and start again. It's kind of a mouthful of a picture, but it's not too bad. Okay, so we're doing angle A is the bigger one, right? Yes. So let angle B be less than angle A. Now we're setting up, here's A. We got angle B less than angle A, but we're going to ultimately draw this whole thing, so try and draw somewhat the same. The angle B in green. Here's angle B. Here's angle B. So I'll let angle A less than angle B, and what does that give us? That gives us that there exists angle there exists angle B prime. We have a screen for the B's. Let's keep doing that so that we can follow the logic again. This is one that following the logic through a couple times is good. So let A less than angle B, comma, and observe that there exists angle B prime such that angle A and angle B prime 
share a side, share a side, comma, and the other side of angle B prime lies in the interior of angle A. That's what it means for one angle to be less than another. When you construct its, its congruent counterpart, then the other side lies in the interior. Right? Right. <laughs> Two. Now I'm going to come down here and construct A prime so that it's encompassing B. So let angle A prime such that angle A prime and angle B share a side, comma, and the other side of angle A prime. And the other side of angle A prime is on the same side as the other side of angle B. So I want both these. I don't want to accidentally draw my A prime foot down here. Right. I need to draw it up here. So I need this other side to be on the same, the other side of angle A prime to be on the same side of a line through the share side, sorry, this is going to be a mouthful, through the shared side <laughs> as the other side of angle B, as the other side of angle B. Probably would have been easier to throw some points on there and talk about sides of the point from. But oh well, we got it. It's a mouthful, but we got it. Okay, so I've constructed this picture so far. <clears throat> All right, let's do what we need to do next. You guys saw me pretty much walk you through the logic of the proof. Now I want you to think through it. Next, we're going to make a triangle. Next, we're going to make a triangle. Remember our given information. I know that this is on the interior of this. I'm trying to prove that this is on the exterior of, of this. So we're going to have really quick label some points. So what do I call them? C and D? Yeah. C. C, D, and then we'll pick C prime on here and D on D prime on here. And we're going to choose it such that this is congruent to this and this is congruent to this, right? So three, let C, D, let C, D on angle A, comma, and let C prime, D prime on angle A prime such that a C is congruent to A prime C prime and A D is congruent to A prime B prime. A D is congruent to A prime D prime. Okay, we got that. Now what are we trying to show? Big picture, what we're trying to show is that this point C prime is is in the exterior of angle B. So if I can find a point on angle B between C prime and D prime, then I'm guaranteed C prime is in the exterior. Because if it were in the interior, it would have to be between that point and D prime. So the whole goal, we're trying to get a point on that line today. Okay. So what's our next step here? Finish the triangle. So we're looking at these triangles. So we got this triangle here, and we got this triangle here, and we know that they're going to be congruent. Right. And we know that there's going to be an angle E. Because we know angle A is congruent to A prime. That was given. 
So maybe four. Observe that triangle. Let's see. C prime, A prime, D prime is congruent to triangle C, A, D by side, angle, side. Okay, so we have that. Which gives me that the point that we want to mark off is that D is congruent to D prime. Angle D is congruent to angle D prime. So I now know that this angle is congruent to this angle. All right, now what? Um, you got to create a point on the plane that, uh, that connects There's a point. through angle B. There's a right, point. E. We can, come and we can pick the point E and that lies on that line and is between those. We know what this picture looks like. Right. And then there's a point, E prime, where it is. Then we come over here and we mark a point, E prime, where D. So that D this prime, E prime is congruent to D. Perfect. So five. Uh, let E be the point where. Uh, what do we want to call that point? Where angle B prime intersects. CD. Okay? And then we'll come mark our E prime here now. Six. Let E prime on let E prime uh On how do I want to say this? Let E prime on the same side, the same side of D prime as C prime, such that D prime E prime is congruent to. So I don't know where this E prime is. E prime could be here, E prime could be here, E prime could be here. I'm just picking the point on the same side of D prime as C prime, such that that's congruent to that. I have no clue where that point E prime lies. I'm trying to show that it lies on that angle. Right. Which well, does, because angle B prime is congruent to Actually, so far now we do know something. Now I do know that E prime is between D prime and C prime. How do I know that? Because it lies on the angle. No, we're going to prove it lies on the angle. So it's going to be a point. Well, I need to show because, a you know, point on the angle is between them. You know, because D prime, E prime is less than D, C. D prime, C prime, which is congruent to D, C. So you have the right idea. So E prime, D prime is congruent to Maybe we should put the D first. D prime, E prime is congruent to what? Uh, D, D. D, E, right? D, E. Now I know that D, E is less than D, C. C. So thus. Because I know that E prime, I already know E is a point between C and D up there. Right. Because it's on the interior. And we know that there's a the Which of triangles. D, C so. is. Keep going. And congruent triangles, so we know that DC is congruent to D, D, C, D prime and C prime. To D prime, C prime. Perfect. So thus, D prime, D prime, E prime is less than D prime, C prime. So we got that D prime, E prime is less than D prime, C prime, which gives me what? D, D prime, E prime, C prime. Which gives me D prime, E prime, C prime. E prime has to be between them. That's right. what it means to be less than. Right. It means that when you construct it on top of the same segment, then the point lies up between them. In this case, they are already lined up. Right. So perfect. So we already know that E prime is between D prime and C prime. What remains to show is that E prime is in fact on this angle. Then there's a point on the angle between them. 
So two separate pieces of logic there. We need to show it's on the angle and it's between them. And therefore, there's a point on the angle between them. And therefore, this other point has to be outside the angle. And since it lies on this, then this whole ray has to be outside. We already proved that. That was an older proof. We proved that if a point on the ray lies in the exterior of the angle, the whole ray does. And if a point on the ray lies on the interior of the angle, the whole ray does. So we're using that behind the scenes, not really specifying it when we use it. Right. But anyway, so we got that. So now what remains to show is that E prime is in fact on, on angle B. And we know that because triangle E prime D prime A prime is congruent to triangle E prime D E D A. Since triangle, which one? E prime. E prime, A prime. E prime, is D prime. Is congruent to triangle E, D, A. A prime is congruent to triangle. By side, angle, side. Not since. No, then, we need them. We haven't said before yet, right? I don't think we have it. So no, then, since. this triangle is congruent to triangle E, D, A. <coughs> by side, angle, side. side which right. gives me that angle E prime, A prime, D prime is congruent to angle E, A, D. Is congruent to angle, we'll just call it angle B. So you can just say that angle B is congruent to angle B prime. E prime, A prime, D prime is congruent to angle B prime. Angle B. We already know that. B it's prime, A prime. So I'm saying, you labeled one wrong. It's either E, A, D or E prime, or B prime. E prime, A prime, D, D, D prime is congruent, to, is congruent prime. to angle B. We know that they're the same angle. Now we do. We just barely figured that out. That was the whole point. I'm trying to show that E prime lies on angle B. Oh, I got you. Okay. So I'm showing that they're the same angle. Right. So since they're congruent, and since they have a shared side coming from a starting point, they have to be equal. Right. So that gives me that angle. E prime, A prime, D prime, D prime is in fact equal B. to angle B. Right. Which gives me that E prime lies on angle B. Which gives me that angle B has a side on the interior or maybe a better way to say that maybe maybe leave it like that come to the next line nine then since we have c prime e prime d prime since we know c prime e prime D prime, then I know that C prime is in the exterior of angle B. Since that, comma, then C prime lies in the exterior of angle B. Ten, therefore, Angle A is greater than angle B. There she blows. Okay, so now our next couple of proofs. I'm not gonna bother writing out reverse proof form, just walking through the proof idea. There are a bunch of simple ones that just tell us some basic properties we already expect these angle things to have. So they're not as interesting as just a bunch of uh, explaining each case. But so for theorem 6 9, this one says for any two angles, so it says given angle A and angle B give it angle A and angle B comma then either remember I told you every time I use the word either I mean one and only one of the following things is going to be true right. 
And then either angle A is less than angle B, angle A is congruent to angle B, comma, or angle A is greater than angle B. <coughs> okay, now, actually, glad we, I took the time to write that up because we missed one part of the definition in one angle being greater than another angle. And part of that definition is that a straight angle is always greater than a non-straight angle. Because notice our definition, there's no way. If I'm trying to say, is a straight angle greater than this angle? Yes. I'm going and constructing it so its other side is in the exterior or the interior. Kind of weird. Right. I got you to say that. Okay. Now notice that this is very different from how you think in terms of degrees. If I were to ask you to draw a 330 degree angle, what would you do? You would have done something like this. Now, if I would have asked you to draw a straight angle, or a 180 degree angle, you would have drawn something like this. Right. Which of those are a larger angle? Nice. This one is 330 degrees. This one is 180 degrees, right? Right. So what's a larger angle? 330 degrees. You'd be tempted to say the 330 degrees. We have no notion of degrees right now in our geometry. All we have are the angles. And so you don't get to say, uh, I want you to think about this as being this being degrees. No, your angle is those points right there. This angle is those points right there. Which of those is greater? Straight. The straight. So the straight angle is greater than any other angle. You can't draw an angle greater than a straight angle. So say any angle greater than 180 degrees is not relevant. Greater than a straight. <laughs> Notice there, there's a little bit of subtlety here. So going back to congruence, we talked about segments being congruence, and then we talked about their length. Two completely different concepts. Turns out they're very closely related, but two completely different concepts. When we were talking about segments, we were talking about, well, we were talking about the segments and how they're congruent with each other. When we were talking about their lengths, we were talking about numbers, and then we were comparing numbers. Right now, when we're talking about these angles and these angles being congruent, we're talking about the angle. We are not talking about the degree of the angle. That's going to be some number that we choose to assign to it. Right. So in geometry, prior to this, when you were talking about one angle being greater than another angle, you meant the degree number we assigned to that angle was a larger number than the degree angle we assigned to another number. Right. We are not talking about degree numbers that we assign to these things. That will be similar to how we assigned length to segments. And we talk about the measurement of a segment when we gave it an actual number. We're not giving it actual numbers yet. So once we get to degrees, then we can talk about one angle, the degree that we assign to it being a larger number than the degree we assign to this. But right now we're actually just talking about the angles. No numbers in geometry, just pure geometric figures, sets of points. And so we don't get to think about this in, as 10 different angles, or you think about this in geometry, technically that could represent infinite number of angles, right? That could also represent going around a bunch of times and then stopping here. Right. Right. So we don't have that in our geometry. All we have are the sets of points. And we want, so we got to come up with a definition that works for a set of points. In our definition, always and forever, a right angle, or sorry, a straight angle is larger than any other angle. <coughs> and I don't know if I accidentally missed some definitions. Maybe I just gave them to you early in case I did. <coughs> but now we have angles being less than and greater than. Then we now have a definition of some angles that you also know. We have the definition of an acute angle, and we have a definition of an obtuse angle. What's an acute angle? Less than a straight right angle. It's less than a right angle. So now that we know what it means for one angle to be less than another, we can define any angle that's less than a, a right, angle. right angle is an acute angle. Any angle that's greater than a right angle and less than a straight angle, we'll call an obtuse angle. So we have acute, right, obtuse, and straight angles. Straight angles are larger than acute an uh, obtuse angles are larger than right angles are larger than acute angles. So always and forever, this angle is larger than this angle. 
We don't get to think about this as being 330 degrees and this being 120 degrees, no. This angle is larger than this angle. Make sense? Yes. Okay, so now we need to prove, given two angles that either this is the case, this is the case, or this is the case. I'm just gonna talk through the cases because they're pretty simple and I don't wanna write all of them. So we can handle the case where both A and B are straight angles. If they're both straight angles, by definition, all straight angles are congruent to each other. Right. Not by definition, but by one of our postulates had that in it. All straight angles are congruent to each other. So they'd be congruent to each other in that case. Let's handle the case where A, where one of them is a straight angle and the other one's not a straight angle. So if A is a straight angle and B is not a straight angle, what do we know? If A is a straight angle and B is not a straight angle, what do we know? That A is greater than B. That A is greater than B. If B is a straight angle and A is not a straight angle, what do we know? That B is greater than A. That B is greater than A. So we handled all the possible combinations with straight angles. So now we just need to handle the case where they're not straight angles. Right. Right? And so now, in the case where they're not straight angles, I can have A and I can have angle B. I can draw A congruent to angle B over here, and its ray is going to fall in one of three places. The ray is either going to land there, or the ray is going to land there, or the ray is going to land there. If it lands in the interior, then A was less than B. If it lands right on, they're congruent. If it lands in the exterior, then it's greater than. So it's either less than congruent to or greater than. We can only do that picture when we don't have straight angles. So you have to handle all the straight angle cases, and then say, other than that, you get this picture. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So, don't think that was really worth writing out. Not nearly as cool as the previous one we did. And then the one that follows from this, uh, I'm going to write out the properties, but we're not going to bother proving it either. I'll just have you tell me how to finish what I'm writing. So, moving on now to Theorem 610. So, and it has five parts to it. So, part one. If I know that angle A is congruent to angle B, and I know that angle B is less than angle C, then what do I know? If angle A is congruent to angle B and angle B is less than angle C, I know that angle A is greater than or angle, less than angle C. Angle A is less than angle C. Because congruence is reflexive. Uh, not really with congruence being reflexive, but then when you draw the picture for this, so when I have angle B is less than angle C, when I draw that picture, that means angle B landed in the interior. Right. So when I draw the same picture with angle A, it's going to land exactly on angle B, and so it's also going to be in the interior. Okay, number two. Next one is if angle A is less than angle B and angle B is congruent to angle C. So if angle A is less than angle B and angle B is congruent to angle C, what do we know? Um, that angle A is congruent to angle C. Angle A is oh, no, sorry. Angle, angle A, A is, is less than angle, angle C. Okay. Angle A is less than angle C. This has pretty much an identical picture to the previous one. Number three, if, what are we looking at now? If A is congruent to B and B is greater than C, if angle A is congruent to angle B and angle B is greater than angle C, then what do we know? Angle A is greater than angle C. Angle A is greater than angle C. Again, almost identical picture. Then for four, we have if, I'm assuming it's going to do if angle A is greater than angle B and angle B is congruent to angle C, what do we know? Then we know angle A is greater than angle C, same thing again. 
And then finally, five. If, I think this is just going to be congruence across the board. If angle A is less than or equal to angle B, and angle B is less than or equal to angle C, then what? If A is less than or equal to B and B is less than or equal to C, A is less than or equal to C. And now, I didn't remember seeing that definition. The author has an asterisk next to it. So, I'm assuming that he's saying this has the definition you expect it to have. What do we mean when we say one angle is less than or equal to another angle? We mean either angle A is less than angle B or angle A is congruent to angle B. One of those two things. Right. So he doesn't, so he just had an asterisk there explaining that's what's meant by that. Okay. So, last definition. Oh, now he gives the definition of acute and obtuse, which we already did. All right, so next theorem, theorem 611, is a theorem that says all right angles are congruent. So theorem 69, theorem 610, probably have space here. Theorem 611 says all right angles are congruent. Okay, let's think this one through. Draw a picture over here. And another picture over here. So I'm going to start out talking about two angles that are right angles. So I have angle A here. Angle A and angle B, and I know that they're both right angles. What does it mean for angle A to be a right angle? means it's congruent to the supplement. So it means that it's congruent to, if we call it supplement A prime, it means A is congruent to A prime, and similarly, B is going to be congruent to B prime. Maybe do my B angles in blue. Because we're not sure, we're still not sure, whether these angles are the same size as those angles. Okay. So if, uh, if, angle A and angle B aren't congruent, then one of them has to be larger than the other. So we'll just pretend that A is the larger of the two. So then if I come over here, let me do my B and B prime in blue. Try and keep our picture clear here. So this is angle B and this is angle B prime. So if I come and I draw over here, angle C, so this right here is angle C. So that angle C is congruent to angle A. So we're assuming by way of contradiction that angle A is not congruent to angle B, right? right. Which means either angle A is bigger than angle B or angle B is bigger than angle A. We'll assume without loss of generality that angle A is smaller than angle B. What if it happened to be bigger? Relabel. So now A is the smaller one. Right. Okay. So I come and I construct C here, such that C is congruent to A. Right? Right. Now C is not congruent with the supplement, therefore. C is congruent with angle A. Right. I'm saying if C is less than angle B, then C would not be congruent to the supplement anymore. Less would not be right angle, therefore all right angles are congruent. You're saying it's it's not congruent to this thing. Right. It's just a contradiction because C is right angle. How do you know it's not congruent to this thing? Well, we don't know C is a right angle. Because we know We know C is congruent, congruent to a right angle. We don't know that angles. Maybe that's that definition. We don't know that Careful. Careful. we don't know that straight angle is congruent. We we're gonna make the argument there, but just don't be too fast and loose. 
I know that angle C is congruent to angle A. Right. How do I know that angle C is also a right angle? Because angle A is. So we already know that angles congruent to right angles are right angles. Yes. How do we know that? Because that's the definition of congruence. It is. I think it is a theorem that we proved. I think it is, isn't it? I mean, are we wrong? But if two angles are congruent, then their supplements are congruent. And so C is in fact congruent to C prime. And so now C is a right angle. You can't just assume since it's congruent to a right angle that makes it a right angle. Wow. We're going to prove that that is in fact the case here. That's not. The whole crux of this problem is I know that A and B are both right angles. Prove they're congruent. I can't assume angles that are right angles are congruent to prove that angles that are right angles are congruent. congruent to right angle, right angle. We can now. You're saying after this proof we can't. We can't. Well, we just did a little mini proof. Explain the logic. How do I know that C is congruent? Or sorry, I took C and I constructed it so it's congruent to A. How did I know that C was a right angle? Because C. Because C prime, its supplement, is congruent to A prime. And since C prime is congruent to A prime is congruent to A is congruent to C, C prime is congruent to C, and therefore C is a right angle. You can get a little dangerous automatically assuming just because two angles are congruent, they're both right, or just because two angles are both right, they're congruent. Or we're proving that because two angles are Yeah, we're going to prove the second one. Turns out that's a bit harder to prove than the first one. But just try not to assume too much from just what you already know is going to come out of the geometry. You see what I mean? Yeah, I do. Okay, so we've got this picture. I know C is congruent to C prime. I know A is congruent to A prime. So I know all four of these angles are all congruent to each other. I'm trying to get a contradiction. How do we get a contradiction out of that picture? You show that. So right out the door, maybe get you started on the way, I know that angle B is greater than angle C, right? Because angle C was constructed congruent, so may, maybe you're not seeing it because we haven't written any words right here, but let's just start. One, so let, let angle A and angle B B right angles, comma, and let angle A prime and angle B prime be their supplements. Assume by way of contradiction by way of contradiction that angle A is not congruent to angle B comma and without loss of generality without loss of generality let angle A be less than angle B so we're going to call the smaller of the two angle A. Right? Right. So I know angle A is less than angle B. I construct a C down here. So three. Uh, let angle C in, how do I want to say this? Let angle C share a side with angle B and have its other side, other side in the interior. And we know that it comes out that way since angle C is, oh, I didn't say let angle C, maybe I won't specify too much here since we don't have a lot of space, and you'll just know from the picture what I mean. So let angle C on angle B such that 
angle C is congruent to angle A. Maybe I'll just say that, even though I'm kind of assuming you get a lot from angle C on angle B. Okay, so I know that angle C is congruent to angle A, and I know that angle A is less than angle B. So angle C is less than angle B, right? Yeah. Keep going with this picture here. So angle B is greater than angle C. What do I know about angle C? You know that's something that's C prime. So angle C is congruent to C prime, right? Right. And C prime is maybe C maybe write out all the logic here in case we're just not seeing it. I know that angle B is for sure greater than angle A. We know that's that what we said right here. Congruent to angle C. Which is congruent to angle C. Which is congruent to angle C prime. Angle C prime. And what do we know about angle C prime? It's congruent to angle A prime. Angle C prime is greater than angle B prime. Right. So angle C prime, which is going to draw down here, which is greater than angle B prime. But what's angle B prime congruent to? Uh, B. Angle B. So I got angle B is greater than angle B. Which is a contradiction. So let's give you our contradiction. So let angle C on angle B prime such that C angle C is congruent to angle A comma. And let angle C prime be its supplement. Okay, four. Maybe just label it. Let R1 be the shared side between angle C and angle C frame. So I want to talk about this ray right here. Observe that R1 is interior to angle C, comma, and exterior to angle C prime. This is what I'm going on with, right? This is just how we justify the exact logic we have here. How do I know that, uh, well, then just walk through it one step at a time, seeing how we know. Six. Then, I know angle A, or sorry, I know angle B is greater than angle A, is congruent to angle C, I know that by definition of angle C, the way I constructed angle C. Angle C, which is congruent to angle C prime, since angle C is a right angle, which is greater than angle B prime. Here's why that exterior bit matters. The only way that I can say that angle C prime is greater than angle B prime is if I note that R1 is in the exterior of angle B prime. That's what it meant. When you, when you draw the two angles on each other, the other end went into the exterior. So but that's how saying, I... It's just saying that R1 is it's a shared size. So that, that it's a shared side between C and C prime. Right, so it's a shared, how, and it's shared side, how is it interior to one angle? How is it it's interior? It's interior to angle B. How do I know that? Hey, you said angle C, not angle C. Oh, sorry, I did? Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I'm doing the B and B prime. Thank you. All right. It makes sense now, right? Yes. Yeah, it's on the angle C. It's interior to angle B and exterior to angle B prime. Right. Exactly. Okay. 
And since it's exterior to angle B prime, that's how we justify this piece of logic. Right. That angle C prime is greater than angle B prime, and then angle B prime is congruent to angle B, which gives us that angle B is greater than angle B. Contradiction. Because every angle is congruent to itself. Seven. Therefore, angle A is congruent to angle B. And there we go. We got every right angle is congruent to every other right angle. Anytime we have two right angles, they're congruent. Good with that? Maybe while you're writing that would be a good time to move the camera. So I don't have to erase what you're drawing. Uh, good enough. We move on to uh, perpendicular bisectors. So definition 6-7 has to do with perpendicular bisectors. What does it say? It says two lines L and M, two lines L and M are perpendicular to each other if they intersect and the angles formed are right angles. So if this is a right angle, and this is a right angle, and this is a right angle, and this is a right angle, then we say that those two lines are perpendicular. We write L is perpendicular to M. And we don't really need all that. All we need is like that. You're guaranteed one of those is a right angle. And its supplement is also a right angle. And then its supplement is right angle. And its supplement is right angle. And we've got all of them are right angles. Okay. So last definition, 6, 7. Definition. Oh, it just continues under the bottom. I was going to say we need to get a perpendicular bisector. A perpendicular bisector is if I have some segment AB. So this is just perpendicular. Now we're doing perpendicular bisector. Perpendicular bisector applies to segment AB. If I have some segment AB and a line L is perpendicular to AB and goes through its midpoint M, then the line L is a perpendicular bisector of segment AB. Notice uh, last week we defined midpoint. What does it mean to be the midpoint of a segment? It means this that portion. Segment, that segment is moved that segment. Exactly. So that was an earlier definition. So we know what the midpoint is. So this definition, it's all well defined. We're only using terms that we've already defined. OK. And that ends chapter 6 for us. Uh, what are you looking at? Let's look at a problem. Pick one for me. Pick a proof, any proof. Yeah, or just pick any out of the book that you like. So, uh. Six, six. Six, six. Give I'm me a page number. On uh, question six. Give me a page number. Question uh, six. Ninety-three. Ninety-three. Six, six. So we're looking at six. six. Question six. one. Question one. Yes. Yeah. I didn't do. One. Okay. I was just reading when I was wondering. How to do it. No, that's fine. Do number one, please. We can do whatever. Let's problem. do number one. Prove equal by equal by equal by equal by equal. Okay. Using. Number one, using theorem 6-3, prove equilateral an equilateral triangle is equal angular? angular? Yeah. Okay. So if I have an equilateral triangle, so that is congruent to that, is congruent to that, right? 
call these points A, B, C. So since, since triangle A, B, C is isosceles, comma, we know what those two ones are here. Angle A, let's see, how do we want to think about this? Talk about B is my isosceles two ways. Exactly. So angle A is congruent to angle C. And also, there are isosceles in a different way, so angle C is congruent to triangle BCA, since triangle BCA is isosceles. Oh man, I think so much sense. Let's see, I did C as my top point, then angle A is congruent to angle B. Then angle A is congruent to angle B is congruent to angle C. How do I know B is congruent to C? Because it's reflexive. Reflexive or symmetric property gives me angle B is symmetric to angle A. Or sorry, let me tell the words correctly. Right, 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 right. By symmetry, I know angle B is congruent to angle A, and so I have angle B congruent to angle A, and angle A congruent to angle C, with transitivity gives me angle B is congruent to angle C. So I know all three are congruent. And so the triangle is equal angular. Yeah, so, well, is that how you do the proof? Yeah. The, the, I mean, uh, the three lines proof can say that. Well, I'm being a little fast and loose. Okay. I didn't say let the triangle exist. But this is good, this is good, and then I didn't explain the logic of how I got here quite right. If I were to continue a little bit more precise, I would have to say, since angle A is congruent to angle B, then I have angle B is congruent to angle A, and that's using symmetry. Since, and then etc. So just using your relationships that you know between those angles, All right, what's next? You said six? No, six. seven. Exercise groups week seven was pretty crazy. It's page 34, it's just the one I'm doing. Uh, it's just prove the congruence of triangles is transitive. Which... Three, okay, I need prove the congruence of triangles is transitive. I need help with the rest of the numbers. You just use the fact that uh, congruence of segments is transitive and congruence of angles is transitive. Because a congruence. Triangle congruence, what does it mean to say one triangle is congruent to another? All it means all the segments are congruent to all the segments and all the all angles are congruent to all the angles. All the respective parts are congruent to all the segments. And so you know that segments being congruent is transitive, and you know that angles being congruent is transitive. So triangles being congruent, being transitive, is just combining those two together. You just gotta write it out for each of the three pieces that you care about, the three segments and the three angles. Can we help me with uh, number four on six six? Number three. Number four? Number three on six six. Number three. Just go back and take it. On six six. Yeah, I got started on it. But number three. If in the figure, so the figure right above it, I assume? Yeah, or so. it says, it looks like the figure on the other. So our figure is just that triangle PQR, right? So we have some triangle. No, it's not. Oh, is this the wrong figure? It's figure 634. 634, okay. The one that looks like a kite? Yeah. All right, so this one, we have that, 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 that. That, 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 or that. Okay. Uh, and the points are A, B, C, D. Okay. And our given information is that in the figure, AB is congruent to AC. So I know AB is congruent to AC. And I know that. BD is congruent to DC. BD is congruent to DC. So I know that this is congruent to this. 
okay? And I'll mark in red what I'm trying to show. Can you just read to me what it is I'm trying to show? If in the figure AB is congruent to AC and BD is congruent to BC, prove that angle ABC is congruent to angle One sec. C. Angle ABC, so I'm proving that this is congruent to what? ACB. ACB, so I'm trying to prove that's congruent to that. Okay. And angle CBD. Angle CBD. Is congruent to BCD. Is congruent to BCD. So I'm trying to show that's congruent to that. And uh, angle ABD. And angle ABD. Is congruent to ACD. Is congruent to ACD. Okay, so the whole sum is congruent to the whole sum. Okay, so we're trying to show that this is congruent to that, this is congruent to that, and then this whole thing is congruent to this whole thing, right? Okay. <laughs> well, notice, what are we given? Triangle ABC, what do I know about triangle ABC? Triangle ABC. Looking at triangle ABC, what is that triangle? It's, it's uh, isosceles. It's isosceles, so its base angles are congruent. So I know this is congruent to this. Yay. That's what I was missing. Next, look at this triangle. What kind of triangle is this? It's also isosceles. Also isosceles. So this is congruent to this. So that gives me that this one is congruent to this one. All right. Now we just need to use the fact that equals add to equals or equals. So equals add to equals or equals. So that's congruent to that. And we're done. Oh, so that's all we do? That's it. We just make a picture and save that. Well, no, you write out the proof. Yeah. I'm walking you through the logic, so I'm not spending all the time just writing out a paragraph. I can write out the whole paragraph if you want, or would you rather go over more problems? No, no, I just hope my cat. It's functional. It's just really difficult to function. I am I'm sure that the whole school is flooding with extra functions. Really bad reason not to write. Okay. So that's the logic for that one. What's next? You have it recorded. I will go over as many as you want. Do you want to waste time writing down or you want to give me more problems? You want to write it down. <laughs> you want to write down. All right. <laughs> Just trying to help you guys. Did you want to go over any of these today or just that? Uh, I don't know. Should we move on to... I was just trying to understand what those proofs were really mean. Our next test is after chapter 8, right? Or did you want to check our other tests? Yeah. Uh, oh, I'll just read those, so... Don't I know that's more questions. You have more homework questions? How many more do you have? How many more questions do we have? Maybe we can keep going with material for a second. Number three on six nine. Number three on six nine. Number three on six nine. What does it say? If uh, yeah, angle one. Uh, if in the figure uh, six fifty eight, which uh, is on page ninety. You're on to page ninety eight. We're looking the at top left. the top left. But this it's one? picture six fifty eight. Six fifty eight. Okay, that one. All right, so we got like a triangle inscribed inside of another triangle. Yeah. Okay, so I got the picture. Get ready to tell me the points in the angle. Yeah. So our picture looks something like this. So you can just make it all ACB triangle, ABC triangle, whatever, it doesn't matter. But it says bottom left is A, top is B, and bottom right is C. One sec. So, so yeah. No. All right, what's this point? A. That point. Is E, D, C, B. This was angle one. Yep. This was angle two. If uh, I remember uh, yeah. Okay. Now, what are we trying to show? Or what's our given, and where are we trying to show? In the figure, angle one is congruent to angle two. Okay. I know that's congruent to that. And angle A B is congruent to B C. Angle. Not, not angle. Length. Oh, sorry, sorry. Length A B. Segment. Is, segment A B is congruent to B C. Sorry. Okay. That. And then prove that A E is congruent to B C. How long is H? Trying to prove that's congruent to that? Yeah. Okay. So, first off, what do I know about my big triangle here? What's screaming at me? Oh, it's awesome. 
Isosceles. Oh, so I know that this angle is compared to this angle. angle. That's right. Okay. That's angle side angle. No, no, no. We're trying to prove the red. We don't know the red. I don't know. That's angle side angle. Oh, right. Angle side angle looking at the top. Yeah. Okay. Angle side angle, the two triangles are congruent, so those side corresponding sides are congruent. <gasps> It's like the only triangles we've proved anything about. I know, I always get that. <laughs> and then, okay, let, let angle one be your angle two and let angle B be your angle two. So with these, where it has the picture lines on, do we need to like, take the whole freaking half page set of the picture? Yes, the whole freaking half page set of the picture. That's nice. No, you don't have to. If it gives you the image. I just say, hey, we know that this is congruent to this, so I say let this be congruent to this, and let this be congruent to this, and then I go to the proof, and I say therefore this and this is congruent. Sounds like you got the outline down. Let this be congruent to this, and this be congruent to this. Therefore, we know this is congruent to this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready to go? Nowhere. On to the next chapter. No. What's one yet? Six ten. Six ten. What are we looking at now, 610? <laughs> prove that something that's equal angular is equilateral. Okay, I'll give you the proof I idea. So I know that that is congruent to that is congruent to that. We know, we already proved that in, that if we have a triangle where the base angles are congruent, then the triangle has to be isosceles. isosceles. If I know the base angles are congruent, the opposite sides are congruent. So those base angles are congruent, those sides are congruent. Those base angles are congruent, those sides are congruent. Okay. Anything else? You guys got really stumped by all this, huh? Yeah. All right. Ready? Ready, ready, ready? Oh, I While you guys are writing that, I'm just going to start writing out this next definition because it's got a mouthful. I want to write the whole thing out. So you keep looking for stuff you want me to do. I'm just going to start writing out. Uh, <laughs> that picture right there? You can say at the top of the Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just look for the isosceles triangles and you're good. Alright. There's two isosceles triangles. Look for both of them.
which is there he's going to be. We ready? Erase the picture? Yeah. And I'll just start writing out the other terms that we have to prove. Film them when we get there. Question what? In the next section. So in exercise group 612 it says construct a right angle. Make or draw you perform construction to draw a right angle. What is that? Is that, uh, is that the thing we did? It's uh yeah, that works. Or is that what is that asking? Draw a right angle. What construct is one. Construction. Uh, we haven't gone to RC construction, so I'm not sure why they're saying that yet. So typically when they yeah, say draw and stuff. construct Please. it, they mean use a compass and a ruler to do it. And so that's probably what they mean. You can do it the way we did it, or you can just use a compass and ruler if you want. Just draw. Well, kind of. You need to draw it precise. And so we haven't gone to RC construction yet, so you can skip the construction until we get to RC construction. So let's just say that. I'm not sure exactly what the author intends with that. Okay, yeah, they had us do some weird stuff. They had us six nine. They had us draw draw 
triangle has 53 degree beams, 31 degree beams. Yeah, if I would know, so I said you could skip those. The author tries throwing a measurement too early to sprinkle it in. He's terrified that students are going to be scared if they can't get a number next to it. Right. It's one of the things that scares students about geometry. You I give know. them a segment and the first thing they want is, okay, but how long is it? Right. You give them an angle, they want to say, okay, but how big is it? They want the numbers attached. Yeah, and so he's kind of uh, mollycoddling that desire to help you see things. But let's move on to chapter seven. Okay, so chapter seven is just called Use of the Congruence Theorems. Basically, we're gonna be proving a bunch of new things about triangles. Now, before we prove something about triangles, we need this definition really quick for the exterior of an angle, or the exterior angle of a triangle. So you start out with some triangle, A, B, C, here it is. Pick an angle, in this case I chose angle C. Draw its adjacent supplementary angle. Notice I could have drawn it two ways. I could have drawn it down here, or I yeah. could have drawn it over here. Right. So this angle right here is exterior to this triangle. Right. This is an exterior angle to this triangle. These two angles over here, the ones I'm marking with green, are called its opposite interior angles. These are the angles opposite my exterior angle, and they're the ones still interior to the triangle. Just a definition. Opposites of an exterior. So let's read this exactly. If an angle is adjacent and supplementary to an angle of a triangle, so if an angle is adjacent and supplementary to an angle of a triangle, in this case, the, this proof is, or that's referencing angle B, C, E in this case. So if an angle, like angle B, C, E here, is both adjacent and supplementary to the angle of a triangle, which this is, it is called the exterior angle, or an exterior angle. I should right. say the, it's just an exterior angle. There's many of them. The other two angles of the triangle are its opposite interior angles. So angle B and angle A are the opposite interior angles of angle BCE. If I would have drawn the exterior angle over here, its opposite interiors would have been angle B and angle C. With me? Yeah. Okay, that's the exterior of an angle. Our next theorem here is to prove that the exterior angle of a triangle is always greater than either of its interior opposites. So in a picture like this, I need to prove no matter how you draw the triangles, that this angle here, angle BCE, is greater than angle A and is greater than angle B. You understand what we're trying to prove? An exterior angle is greater than either of its interior opposites. That's what we're proving. Okay. So let triangle ABC exist and let angle BCE be an exterior angle. Now I'm going to prove that this angle is greater than angle B. If we would have flipped it and drawn it like that, the exact same proof works, in, works for proving that it's greater than angle A. Right. So proving that's greater than angle B and proving that's angle, greater than angle A, logically equivalent, so we're just gonna prove it's greater than one. Right. Okay, so let angle ABC exist and let that be an exterior angle. Okay, two, what am I going to do? I'm going to mark off a point here, call it B prime. Do I want to call it B prime or will that be confusing? Call something different than B prime. Uh, I don't know why I have an E there. It's a, B, C, we're missing D, so we'll put D here. So I'm gonna pick a point D here, such that this is congruent to this. Uh, sorry. Assume by way of contradiction that angle C is not greater than angle, or sorry, our exterior angle isn't angle C, it's angle B, C, E. Assume by way of contradiction that B, C, E is not greater than angle B, which gives me that angle BCE 
is congruent to angle B or angle BCE is less than angle B. And I need to handle both those cases. And you show that both those cases lead to contradiction. So we're doing proof by way of contradiction. I'm going to assume by way of contradiction that this angle is not bigger than angle B. So in other words, I'm going to show that it's impossible for it to be congruent to angle B, and I'm going to show that it's impossible for it to be less than angle B. Therefore, it has to be greater than angle B. With me? Yeah. So I'm going to handle the congruent case first because that makes proving the less than case really easy. So three. Assume angle BCE is congruent to angle B, comma, and let D on a shirt. And let D be the point on this side of the angle. So how do I want to say that? Let D on the line through CE such that CD is congruent to uh, CB. So setting up this triangle, or so now I have it set up so I have these two triangles. Remember, we're setting up an impossible picture. So I constructed it so that CD is congruent to BC, right? Okay. And I'm assuming by way of contradiction that this angle is the same size as this angle. So then what do I know? B, it's kind of hard to see what you can infer because of the weird picture. I have that angle is the same size as that angle, right? So that this is congruent to this. That's what I want. Okay, that's why I'm going to stop. So AB is congruent to CD. So let me see that in my proof. Let da, 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 D on the line through CE such that CD is congruent to AB. There we go. That's what we want. That's better. So now we're looking at this triangle and this triangle. What do we know? Looking at triangle ABC and triangle uh, DCB. What's the question? So here's what we have so far in our picture. We're setting up a bad picture, we're showing it leads to contradiction. Okay. So I know that this angle is congruent to this angle. Okay. And I have constructed it so that this side is congruent to this side. Okay. So look at these two triangles, what do we know? Angle C is not congruent to angle B. Well, you're just assuming that from the picture. Assume by way of contradiction that is. We're going to lead to something impossible. Okay. But, so just, just assume that that angle that is, is congruent to that angle. Trying to figure out what we know. Pictures lie. That side's congruent to that side. That angle is congruent to that angle. What do we know? We know that angle D is congruent to angle C. Wait a second. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Angle D is congruent to angle A. How? I don't know. I like the <laughs> No, we don't know that. Or at least I don't see how we know that. Let me show you something we do know. I know that this side is congruent to this side. Okay, now what do we see? Triangle. 
DCB is congruent to triangle CBA? Almost. DCB is congruent to ABC. Right. Order matters there. Okay. Four. By angle side angle. Side angle side, right? Yes. Thank you. So then triangle DCB is congruent to triangle ABC by side angle side. So I know DC is congruent to AB. Make sure I have the order right. DC is congruent to AB, yes. CB is congruent to BC. CB is congruent to BC, yes. And the middle angle congruent to the middle angle. Oh, in this case, we stuck it at the end, didn't we? What is that line right there in between on number line number oh, two? Oh, C and that. What Sorry, what? Sign? Line number two, the sign was then or going down. Assume by way of conservation that angle BCE is what? Oh, not greater than. So greater than not. I know that this angle is in fact greater than that angle. We're assuming by way of contradiction that it's not greater than. So that means it's either congruent to or it's less than. Okay. That's all that happens. Okay. So I have that these two triangles are congruent to each other. So first you're handling the case where it is congruent. All right. Yes. So we're going to show it's impossible for it to be congruent and it's impossible for it to be less than. Therefore, it has to be greater than. So now, what do I know if these two triangles are congruent? Notice the corresponding angles that I know are congruent to each other. I know that this angle right here is congruent to which one? You guys still alive out there? Yeah. This angle is congruent to which angle in this triangle? Um, angle C, is that what you're talking about? This angle one that C I just marked in red. Is congruent to I just barely showed that the triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DCB, right? So that angle is the same as the angle of B. It means it's congruent to angle B, or the opposite. The, 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 the one up here. Yeah, that one. Other one. There we go. So it's, it's that top one next to B. CBD. Perfect. So then, CBD. so this gives me that angle, we just called that one angle C, since C. that was part of our initial triangle. Right, it's congruent to angle is CBD. Congruent to angle, C. angle CBD. Perfect. Okay, so then, by then yeah. consider this angle. Consider angle A, B, D. What is that angle? A, B, D. It's congruent to angle A, C, D. Is congruent to ACD, right? Which is a straight angle. Which is a straight angle. So then that a is a straight angle. Why is that a contradiction? Because it can't be. <laughs> What's the problem with this being a straight line? There wouldn't be a triangle. What do we know precisely is impossible with this being a line? How do I know that what I'm about to draw in green cannot be a line? Because uh, it's there's three points to the plane. So there can only be one line that goes through two points. So this line goes through which two points? Uh, a and B. A D. So it intersects the line through A D twice. Right? Oh, I got you saying this one. Okay. Okay. This is a straight angle which gives me the line through ABD. Through AB intersects AD. The line through AC at least twice. AC twice. Contradiction. Okay, so now six, assume this time that angle, uh, how did we label it? Did we say BCE? <coughs> Try to be consistent. Angle BCE is less than angle B. So we showed that this angle can't be congruent to that angle. So now let's handle the case where it's less than. Let's try and see why this can't be less than that one. Now, if this is less than this angle, 
then that means I can construct an angle inside of that one congruent to this one. So then I can come here to B, and I can construct a ray down here so that this is congruent to this. Right. And then we have an exterior angle congruent to its interior opposite, which we just proved is impossible. Right. So that's why you do the congruent case first. Okay, okay so 7. Then there would exist some point interior to AC. What haven't we used yet? F. F. Let's call it F. Then there exists F on AC such that such that angle BCE is congruent to angle CBF and angle BCD or BCE we've been using BCE is exterior to triangle CBF eight This was already shown shown to be impossible in the first part of the proof. So we got a contradiction. Because you can't have an extra angle congruent to an interior, an interior of a triangle. That's dying. Therefore, Trying, or therefore, angle BCE has to be greater than angle B. And we proved it. Okay. Let's go into our next proof here. Oh, actually, uh, the author gave two proofs of this. He also gave Euclid's proof of it. So let's go over Euclid's proof for this theorem. We'll just do the construction, we won't bother writing out all the words. Proving the exact same thing, just gonna do it the way Euclid did it. Okay, so for our Euclid, let's get back our uh, starting triangle. I'm not sure if I wanna make it that much of a, and we're gonna kinda draw up a lot. Let's, let's try to make it one more exaggerated. Yeah. Okay. So we have a triangle. Just see how I label the points here. No, oh, I got confused by me. Like exaggerated like that will make the picture come out nicer. Okay. So we have A, B, C, and then carrying out here, we have some point B like that. Okay, so how did Euclid go about proving this? We're trying to show that this angle is bigger than angle B, right? Right. So first thing Euclid did is he said, let's pick a midpoint on segment BC. Try and be somewhat accurate here. And I called it F. So I know that that is congruent to that. We're gonna construct a line through A and F. And mark another point, I just called it E. So that this is congruent to this. It's kind of far, it's four as well. Okay. So starting with my triangle, pick the midpoint on this side, then pick a point along my ray E such that this is congruent to this. Now let's see what we know really quick. I know that E is in the interior. I know that we're still completely in the in well, I'm not sure how much of that I want to say right now. We'll just reason through the picture here in a second. Okay, next, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna connect down E with C. So 
So there's our picture so far. Wow. All right. So what do we know about these two triangles? They're not isosceles. This side is congruent to that side, and this side is congruent to that side. We know they're congruent. How? Because vertical angles are congruent. Vertical angles, perfect. So we have vertical angles here. So that angle is congruent to that angle. So let's see. Angle B is congruent to which one? Angle E. Angle E? Angle C. Angle C. Make sure you follow the picture, right? Right. And then angle, this remaining angle, is congruent to this remaining angle. Okay, so there's all our angles that we know are congruent. Okay. What about the edges for KX? B is congruent to DC. B is congruent to C. Okay, right, but we're just trying to show that angle B is less than angle E, C, D. So we're trying to show it's less than this whole angle. Right? What is, which angle? F? Angle B, remember our picture, our whole, let's draw just a blank picture really quick to say what we're trying to show. We're trying to show, take a straight angle, make it its exterior angle. We're trying to show that this is bigger than this. This angle is bigger than that. Right. That's what Euclid was trying to B, show. Is B the original triangle? I thought F was the original triangle. No, okay. Original triangle is ABC. So, oh, it's original okay. triangle marking the points. A, C, and B. Here's our initial triangle. Do, do, do. Okay. So I took our initial triangle, marked a midpoint, constructed that. So this piece is, uh, this triangle is congruent to this piece of our initial triangle. So we didn't do anything with anything right there. Anyways, what do we have? We have angle B is congruent to angle C, angle C is smaller than angle BCD. Right. So that's how Euclid proved it. Smart. Now you're thinking, yeah, Euclid's way of proving is always much more fun because it's just construction based. Right. But he's being really fast and loose, relying on his picture a lot. Right. How on earth do we know at this point E is in the interior of this? How do I argue that this ray is in the interior of this angle? Right. That's what it needs to be. And see, Euclid, he's just looking at the picture and going on his merry way. Right. He says, obviously, and just keeps continuing. So, far less careful, but far more fun. The way Euclid does things. You don't have to carefully think through all the steps as much. You can kind of just have fun with the construction, see what you see in the construction, and keep going. Right. But yeah, in general, Euclid's proofs are much more fun. And... Well, we'll see how far we get. I'm still not sure what we're going to do as we get further and further in the book. What we're going to do when we get done with the book, I should say. Are we getting close? Are you trying to skip any more chapters? Uh, did we skip any? Oh, we just skipped chapter one because, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Well, let's just ask if we skip like, the last half of the book. No, no. We'll go through almost the entire book. We won't skip anything um, important in the book. What you skipped in chapter one was just introducing you to basic things like right. yeah. degrees and angles and basic cool. terminology before you got rid of its definitions. Right. So we didn't really skip anything. Okay, so that was Euclid's way. Now we're moving on to, uh, okay, I already have it written. Seven, seven, two. If AB is greater than AC, if and only if, why well, right? Seven three there. I don't know why. It's a seven two. Okay, just making sure we're not skipping it here. All right. So let's go over this one. Uh, maybe indent a little here since I have that. Maybe and let's draw a picture for this really quick over here. So we've got some triangle ABC, and I want to construct it so that angle C is bigger than angle B. So I'm going to make it so that angle C. Two angles too close together. Let's see. We'll do an obtuse line, and then it's obvious which one is the biggest. So here's C. We'll make this B. We'll make this A. Not sure if we'll run into trouble with our picture there, but so we've got some picture like this. What are we proving? We're proving that if side AB is bigger. Then side 
AC, if this length is bigger than this length, then the angle opposite this length, in other words, this angle, has to be bigger than, let's do, angle B, that angle has to be bigger than this angle. Just mark that with red. So if the blue side is bigger than the red side, then the angle opposite the blue side has to be bigger than the angle opposite the red side. That's what we're proving. Let me see what my picture looks like. Uh, shoot, let me just draw it closer to my picture so I can draw it pretty and not make a mess. So the way I drew my picture looks more like this. Okay, so called this A, called this C, called this B. Alright. So one. Uh, so notice that this is an if and only if proof. So I need to show that if AB is greater than AC, then angle C is greater than angle B. And then I need to show the converse. If this is a case, then this is a case. So one. Let triangle ABC such that AB is greater than AC. So I know that this piece right here is bigger than this piece right here. That's what I know so far. Okay. So since AB is greater than AC, then that means I can mark off a point over here, call it C prime, such that this is congruent to this. Since AB is greater than AC, there has to be a point C prime over here I can mark off such that this segment is congruent to this segment. So AC two. Prime is congruent to AC. Right. So then there exists. What's that line on the outside? Right before you wrote one. Say that proof. Oh, it's just an arrow pointing that way. And then I have it wrapped in parentheses. So it's an arrow pointing that way. I'm saying I'm going to show that this implies this. And then later I'll draw an arrow pointing the other way, letting you know now I'm going to show this implies this. That way I've shown an if and only if proof. Okay. okay, so then there exists C prime in the segment AB such that AC prime is congruent to AC. So now we've got this triangle here. What do you notice about that triangle? It's isosceles. It's isosceles. And so I instantly know that the base angles are congruent. Okay, so three. Then angle AC prime C, AC prime C is congruent to angle AC C prime. Right? A. Angle A C prime C is congruent, is congruent to AC C prime. Okay. Those two angles are congruent. Yes. Then that's that, comma. I also know that angle BCA is greater than angle ACC prime. Maybe I should call this ACB, starting from A like we did the other ones. ACB. This angle, ACB, is greater than ACC prime. Right. How do I know that? They Just have the a side in common, and the other side of the smaller angle is interior to the bigger angle. That's the definition. Say that again. What does it mean for one angle be bigger than the other to angle. be bigger than another angle? It means that I can, if I were to inscribe it on it, the other side would be interior. Right. So since this is interior to the triangle, it's obvious that it's less. Then it's a smaller angle. Perfect. So I know that, that, comma, and I also have that angle 
A C prime C is exterior to triangle B C C prime. This angle is an exterior angle of this small triangle, of the triangle in green here. Right? What do I know about an exterior angle of a triangle? It is greater than its interiors. Interior opposites. opposites. It might not be greater than that angle, but it's greater than the interior opposites. So then, then I know that angle B is less than what? Angle B is less than angle C prime. Angle A C prime C, probably what you meant. Yeah. Angle A C prime C, which we know that that is congruent to what? Angle C C prime. A C C prime. A C C prime. Angle A C C prime, which we know is less than what? B A. Angle C prime A C. Or no, C prime. I know A C C prime is less than which angle? Angle B. No, it's greater. It's greater than angle B. It's less than angle C. Angle C. Oh. So that gives me that angle B is less than angle C, which is what we were after. Right. I called it angle A, C, B up here. Should have just called it angle C. Here's where we were seeing that inequality. Angle C is greater than A, C, C prime. Okay. So now I need to prove it the other way. Now, comma. So we're starting a fresh picture now. So I proved, I proved if AB was greater than AC, then angle C was bigger than angle B. Right. That was the first direction. Now I need to prove the other direction. Now I need to show that if angle C is greater than angle B, then AB is greater than AC. To prove the if and only if. To prove the if and only if. Okay. So now, assume, or let, assume, or let, however you want to say it. Now assume, Angle C is greater than angle B. So now we're kind of doing a reset on our picture here. So I don't know how the lengths compare to each other. All I know is that my blue angle here is a larger angle than my green angle. Okay, so we're trying to get AB is greater than AC. Let's see what happens otherwise. Six. If AB was congruent to AC, then what do we know? AB is congruent to AC. We know that if it was, yeah. If AB was congruent to AC, isosceles. then it's isosceles. That would give me that angle B is congruent to angle C. Angle B is congruent to angle C, which, which can't happen. Seven. If AB was less than AC, what would that give us? If AB was smaller than AC, what do we know? AC, angle C is, a, is an acute angle, which we know that doesn't matter. Up here, we showed that if AB is greater than AC, angle C is greater than angle B. We already showed that. Okay. So that was the first part of our proof. Yeah. So if AB is less than AC, what do we know? AB is less than AC. We know angle B is less than angle C. Angle B is greater than. 
angle B would be greater than angle C, which gives us a contradiction. Okay. If AB is bigger, or sorry, if AC were bigger than AB, we just really showed up here. If one side of a triangle, this first part of the proof was, if one side of a triangle is bigger than an other, then its opposite angle is bigger than the other. Now I remember if its opposite angle is bigger than the other. Than right, the but we're saying, so we assume that angle C is greater than angle B. I am now trying to show that AB is greater than AC. I'm going to show that AB being congruent to AC leads to contradiction. We already did that. Now I'm going to show that AB being less than AC leads to contradiction. Right. If AB was less than AC, angle B would be less than angle C. But I know that angle C is greater than angle B. Contradiction. So 8, therefore, AB has to be greater than AC. It couldn't be less than, and it could be congruent to, so it had to be greater than. And so that's how we end that proof. All right, and then we get to the triangle inequality, one of the more famous proofs in geometry. You good with that? Do you need that for a sec? Maybe I can erase over here? Yeah, it's just the old set, and I'm on set, so. Okay, I'll just erase over here. So we'll prove the triangle inequality, and then we'll prove the algebra version of the triangle inequality, and then we'll call it good for today. So this is theorem, I think we're on 7.3 now. Get the verbiage for the sink. In any triangle ABC, comma, AB plus BC is greater than or equal to AC. In this case, we can just say strictly greater than, I think. Let me double check what it says. This is the inequality yes. triangle. This is called the triangle inequality. Which is what we're going to prove. Which is what we're going to prove. No, what is that? Like one triangle is greater than the other? No. Uh, what this says is that if you have a triangle, ABC, The sum of two side lengths is always greater than the third side length. Oh, we're getting into this stuff. Okay. It kind of says that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. That's one way it's often phrased. Right, okay, yes. You can't take some detour. You can't, you can't go off on a path here and then actually get from here to here in a shorter distance. Unless it's an angle of On any triangle. That's true. Right, right, right. So taking a detour always longer, you always cover more distance than just going straight there. That's intuitively what it says. Okay. So let's get started with this. One, let triangle ABC. Comma, and observe that if AC is less than or equal to AB, or AC is less than or equal to BC, comma, we're done. So first off, if the only way that we're going to ever break this inequality is if we for sure use our biggest side over here. So what we're saying is, if AC isn't the biggest side, so if AB was bigger than or equal to AC, or BC were greater than or equal to AC, obviously when I take something greater than or equal to this and then add something to it, it's going to be greater than it. Right. There's no point proving it. Right. So we're already done if that's the case. So now, from here on out, we're going to assume that AC is greater than both of those. So two, 
then assume AC, the length of AC is greater than AB, and the length of AC is greater than BC. So AC has to be our longest side. Okay, so drawing our picture here, first thing we're going to do I'm trying to show that this distance is less than this plus this, right? Right. So I'm going to mark off already, pick a point over here. I think I called it D on this. Doesn't really matter, but pick a point D on here. There has to be a point D on here such that this is congruent to this. Now I know that because AC is greater than AB. That's why we went through that first line. Right. So I can for sure mark off that point and not have broken anything. Okay, so look at this triangle right here. What kind of triangle is it? It's an isosceles. It's an isosceles triangle. So I instantly know that this angle is equal to that angle. Okay. From here on out, what am I trying to prove? I'm trying to prove that this side is less than this side. Right. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. That makes sense. Okay. So I'll observe that angle. Well, let me write it out first. <coughs> Three catch up to our picture really quick. So let D on AC such that AD is congruent to AB, comma, and observe that angle ABD is congruent to angle ADB. Okay. So the crux of my proof from here on out is I am trying to show that, uh, let me mark it red. I'm trying to show that this angle, what I'm still trying to show is that that angle is larger than this angle. If I can show that this angle is larger than that angle, what do I know? One more time. So maybe mark the green so I can talk to the colors. I'm trying to show that the red angle is larger than the green angle. Okay. If I show that the red angle is larger than the green angle, then the red side has to be larger than the green side, using our previous proof. Right. And so this being, if this side is larger than this side, then this side plus this side is more than this plus this. Right, yes. That's what we're trying to prove. So I can do that if I can show that this angle is bigger than that angle. How am I going to argue that red is bigger than green? Think about the proofs that we've already done. Well, we got to see if we can find out if B is B or if B is, uh, never mind. I already know that this is congruent to this, so we've gotten to there. So from that, you should be able to argue that this angle is bigger than this angle. Since B and D are congruent and Right, we don't have to because A, C is a straight angle is a straight and, angle. A, B, and A, B, C is not a straight angle. And A, B, C is a... Uh, because they're supplements. Uh, a, B, B is a supplement to B, B, C. So we know that that supplement has to be bigger B, B. because... Why? This could be almost taking up everything. I'm saying it has to be bigger. It's a straight... It's a supplement. My triangle could have been leaning like that, couldn't it? Very rigorous line of reasoning we can use using our previous theorem. Notice that this is an exterior angle to the triangle over here, right? Right, so it means it's greater than. It's greater than what? So four. B so and A. Let's, let, let's call this, this is angle BDC. So angle BDC is greater than what? Angle A and angle B. It's greater than angle A. 
It's not greater than angle B. Angle B refers to the whole thing. Okay, it's A greater than angle ABD. ABD. So it's greater than angle ABD. Angle ABD is congruent to what? D. No. ABD, oh. whatever the angle is. It's congruent to angle ABB, right? Right. It's congruent to angle ABB. Now notice that angle ADB is an exterior angle to this triangle. So it is bigger than what? B, or uh, DBC. Is greater than angle DBC. And so, DCB. So perfect. So I show that angle BDC, this red one, is greater than angle DBC, the green one. Right. So then, then DC has to be greater than uh, DC. So six. So then AB plus BC, AB plus BC has to be greater than AD plus DC which is equal to AC. AB is congruent to AD, so this is equal to this, but this is greater than this. That's what we were showing up here. So that equals that, this is greater than this, so that whole thing is greater than this whole thing. But this whole thing is AC. And that's what we were after. We're done. The triangle inequality from algebra is in terms of absolute value. Oh, too late. Okay, that's what I'm struggling with. I'm in struggle because I thought you were referring to the angles, and there's like no way in the world. Jeez. So, from algebra, the version of the triangle inequality is that the absolute value of A plus B is less than or equal to the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B. It's algebra. Uh, yeah, this is also called the triangle inequality. Same type of thinking. We think about this as distance. Right. And so the distance from A to B can't be more than the distance to A plus the distance to B. Kind of. Why is this not? A plus B can't be A plus B. The absolute value of A plus B can't, is always less than or equal to the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B. That's the best way to say it. So let's prove this, and let's remind ourselves what we mean by absolute value. What's the definition of an absolute value function? The length, no matter if it's... We need a precise definition now. The distance from zero. That is... You need a notion of distance for that to make sense. You use absolute value to define distance. And so you end up going circular if you try and do it that way. The exact definition of absolute value of x is it is x if x is greater than or equal to 0, and it's negative x if x is less than 0. You never have a negative absolute value. That's not what it says. So let's see. What's the absolute value of negative 3 equal to? 3. So don't just think through what you've been taught in grade school. Actually think through the definition now. So let's think carefully about it. Negative 3 here. Is negative 3 greater than or equal to 0? No. No. Is negative 3 less than 0? Yes. Yes. So we spit out negative whatever we put in. We put in negative 3, so we spit out negative negative 3. Now, it happens to be the case that this is 3. That would be a separate proof. But that happens to be 3. Oh, goody. But here's where almost any student you ask from high school would get the problem completely wrong. I say, if a is less than zero, then the absolute value of negative a is equal to what? It's negative negative a. a. Positive a. It's equal to positive a, right? No, you just failed. Just like every other kid, because you're not carefully thinking through the definition. a is less than zero. What's negative a? Less than zero or greater than or equal to zero? 
Uh, more than zero. More than zero. What does absolute value function say? If the thing you give me, if the thing you give me is greater than or equal to zero, spit out the thing you gave me. I gave you negative a. Is that greater than or equal to zero? Yes. Yeah, so spit it out. So you have this dumbed down notion of, oh, just get rid of your negative signs. No, sometimes the negative sign is what's making the number positive. Right. If a is less than zero, it's already a negative number. Negative a is a positive number. So that's the precise definition of absolute value. And so, if I was teaching algebra, here's one of the things I would have made to prove. That the absolute value of a plus b is less than or equal to the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b. So, one. Observe that the absolute value of a plus b is equal to a plus b or negative a plus negative b. Has to be one of those two. When you take the absolute value, you either spit out what you're given or you spit out the negative of what you're given. Right. Two. Observe that a is always less than or equal to the absolute value of a. That would have been a lemma that we did before. For any real number, it's always less than or equal to its absolute value. Maybe say for all x. Observe that for any x, comma, x is always less than or equal to its absolute value. So that would have been a side lemma that we did before the proof. And that way you would just break up into two cases. If x is negative, then the negative is less than the positive version of itself. If x is positive, then it's going to be equal to the positive version of itself. So that's a quick one that I can prove. Okay, three. Then a plus b is definitely less than or equal to if I replace a with its absolute value and I replace b with its absolute value. Right? A plus B right. is always, I know that for any number, it's always less than or equal to its absolute value. Right. So A is less than or equal to its absolute value, and B is less than or equal to its absolute value. Right. Good. And negative A plus negative B is less than or equal to the absolute value of negative A plus the absolute value of negative B which is equal to the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B. So A plus B is less than or equal to the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B. Negative A plus negative B is less than or equal to the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B. Or, therefore, we handle both cases. Therefore, the absolute value of a plus b is less than or equal to the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b. Uh, maybe this, we should have proved in a lemma before, that when you take the absolute value, you can get rid of the negative sign and then change the That every number in its negative has the same absolute value. But outside of that, that's how that proof probably goes. So, probably heard of the triangle inequality before. In algebra, it's referencing this. In geometry, it's referencing this. Why do we have the less than here, but the less than or equal to here? Because either Here, we're forcing it to be an actual triangle. If we would have picked just three points, A, B, and C, rather than forcing it to be a triangle, then that would make it like this. Because then you can pick all three points to be collinear. And that gives you the equal case. So if you force it to be a triangle, it's always going to be greater than. But if you just pick three points in general, then it's going to be greater than or equal to. Right. Because I could have picked the points A, B, C, all collinear. And in this case, A, B plus B, C happens to equal A, C. So if you require to be a triangle, then you get a proper inequality. If you just pick three random points, 
Maybe you have a triangle, maybe you don't. Handle the case where you have a triangle, you get this. Handle the case where you don't, you get this. And then you get greater than or equal, that's how you prove that way. So that's how you get the equal sign to show. Okay. Uh, so we did that. Next time we'll talk about polygons, a bunch of definitions, and then talk about RC constructions, roller compass constructions. All right. So thanks, Silas. I think that's a good place to end it. Uh, did you have any other questions that you want recorded? Uh, for homework or anything? You're good? Okay. Go ahead.